Hey, it's James Mulvaney here. Have you ever wanted to get that perfect radio voice? Have you ever wanted to sound cleaner, crisper through your microphone? Have you ever wondered how they sound so impressive when you listen to radio stations or podcasts? Well, all of that and more coming up in today's video. All right, so three steps to getting that perfect radio voice that everyone wants. So the first thing I'm gonna start off with is there is absolutely no need to change your voice. I think there's this preconception that radio DJs or podcasters or presenters have to sound a certain way. And this probably goes back to the, like the 80s when they were like, hey, welcome along, I'm a big cool DJ and all this kind of stuff. That's totally out now. Um, I think the more unique your voice is sometimes, the more it can stand out in the crowd. So if you feel like you don't sound like everyone else, that's not a bad thing because it will allow you to actually get cut through. So really that's the first thing to sort of start off with. Don't panic, don't feel like you have to change your voice or sound a specific way to fit in with the crowd. Your voice as it is right now is just fine. I'm gonna give you a few tips today on how to make it sound even better. Next up, bring your personality. I think when you're speaking down a microphone or you know if you're talking to a camera like I am now, it's really important that you kind of emphasize yourself, your normal self a little bit. Now I'm not saying you have to be really like energetic and up here, but just how you normally are, bring it up a little bit um, because it helps you come across better and it helps your personality shine through a bit more. You do have to make, I think, a little bit more effort than you perhaps normally would if you're just talking face to face with someone because obviously especially if you're doing an audio recording they haven't got that body language to rely on now i'm not saying you should be really really crazy and like you know super hyped but just emphasizing your personality a little bit raising up a little bit can help you come across really warm and really exciting and ultimately bring the energy to the table you don't want to sound too monotone you don't want to sound boring you want to sound exciting and get the listener or the viewer really on your side be authentic and remember to always be true to yourself, I think is crucial and goes a long way, you know, if you're doing any kind of communication, whether or not it's public speaking, audio presenting, podcasts, radio, TV, uh, video interviews, whatever it might be, you always need to be authentic and be true to yourself. Next up, don't rush and try and be well-spoken, you know, try and avoid using too much slang or kind of colloquial terms that people might not understand. Make sure you have little gaps, make sure you remember to take a breath every now and again. It's too easy to remember to be like, hi, I'm James and welcome to the show and blah, 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 and then forget to actually breathe between sentences. So, I mean, I'm guilty of this sometimes. I kind of just run at a million miles an hour all the time anyway, but you know, I think actually slowing down and remember to break things into sort of manageable sections as you're speaking kind of helps yourself with your own sanity and also it will allow your listener to understand the points that you're trying to communicate much clearer. Next up, when you're talking on the radio, when you're talking on a podcast, remember to speak to the listener, okay? You're not speaking to you guys or them, you're speaking to the person listening or watching you. Remember to always talk to the person listening or watching you as if they were sat right in front of you or next to you. There's no point of saying everybody listening or everyone tuning in. Um, you kind of say, hey, welcome to the show. Hope your day is going well. Hope you're doing well. Use the word you more than like you guys or they or whatever. Remember that the person listening isn't sat with a big group of people. They're likely just gonna be sat on themselves. They might have headphones in on a public transport or on a car. So, you know, you need to be speaking to that person like I'm doing now to you, as if they kind of just sat there with you, um, not as if they're, they're this big group of people, okay? That makes it more intimate and also makes it a lot more relatable. So that's my next tip. Also think about who your audience are. What is your target demographic? Who's listening to your radio show? Who's listening to the podcast? Who's watching your YouTube videos? Let's think about this. If you're speaking to a bunch of say, between six and 10 year olds, you're gonna to talk to them and communicate with them in a completely different way than if you're speaking to say 15 to 18 year olds, teenagers, or you know, if you're speaking to a group of seniors, again, very, very different way of communication. OAPs, seniors, people, that kind of like 60 to 70 age, completely different mindset, completely different mode of communication that you need to adopt. If you're speaking to business people, you probably want to communicate in a different way to if you're speaking to people who are kind of looking more for entertainment. So, you know, think about who your audience actually are and craft your message, craft your tone of voice and craft your personality. Like I say, don't completely change it, but just think about who you're talking to and how you can adjust 
how you're talking to kind of reach them in a way that they'll understand and really resonate with. Finally, before we move on to microphone technique and microphones, because I know you're excited about which microphones sound great, so I'm gonna tell you all about that in a second. But the last thing I wanna say in this section is practice makes perfect. The more speaking you can do to the camera, to the microphone, record yourself, listen back to it, learn to get a critical ear. There's no harm in sort of being a little bit critical of yourself and thinking, you know, maybe that wasn't so good. I was rushing that link or um, maybe I wasn't making complete sense there or I was tripping up on my words. The more you practice, the more you will experience how to do it and ultimately, you know, deliver better results for your listeners, which is what you want to do. The more and more you do it, the better you become. It's just like anything in life, really. So there's my quick sort of introduction. This is the first section of this video. Next up, I want to talk about choosing a microphone and talk about audio quality. And then I'm going to give you some secrets, some industry secrets to make your voice pop and how to make it really cut through everyone else's and make it sound 10 times better. We're using some wizardry, some technical wizardry. So we're going to go over that next. Microphones, let's dive into a microphone. So for that, we're gonna to need to change the camera angle so you can hear me on here. Now, this is a Neumann TLM 103. This is a pretty expensive microphone, okay? Um, I'm not recommending you go out and spend this much money on a microphone, but it does sound incredible. Now, let me show you a couple of things. Firstly, I'm not in a studio here, uh, I'm in my home office. So if I'm back here, you can hear there's quite an echo. It doesn't sound great. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, echo in the room. Now this room is not too bad in that this kind of carpeted floor I've got, well actually you can't see it but I've got clothes hanging up drying, you know, uh, coats on hooks and stuff like that. So there's kind of a few bits of um, soft material to kind of prevent that echo. If you can actually insulate your walls with foam panelling, you can get it quite cheaply off Amazon, it will make a big difference. But the thing I'm trying to point out is, if I'm closer to the microphone here, you don't get as much of that echo, okay? And you're getting what is known as the proximity effect. So if I go really close, okay, you can really hear every single detail of my voice. And that is one of the techniques that radio presenters use all the time when they want to reel you in and get you really excited. This mic is condenser mic. It is an expensive one, right? This is pretty pricey, uh, especially if you're just getting started. But you know, I love the sound of it and it works really well for my particular voice. Now, that's what I would say. If you can try and maybe go and try out some different mics before you buy them, I'd recommend doing that. You can always hire them, uh, especially if you're going to make quite a substantial investment, you know, maybe sort of between $500 and $1,000. You can hire one for a day or two, see how you get on with it, see what you think your voice sounds like through it. Always wear headphones as well, because a lot of people don't even know what their own voice sounds like. The more you record yourself, the more familiar you get with the ups and downs of your voice and these kind of things. So there's a few tips on microphone technique. Generally speaking, you want to sort of be about hand spans width away from your mic. But as I say, if you want to get really close to it, kind of sounds pretty cool, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch to another mic, which I also really like. and It's a little bit cheaper than this one. It's a different kind of microphone. It's dynamic. So it's... um better for sort of direct contact and it helps reduce a lot of the background noise that I mentioned, you know, if you're, if you're sort of back here. So let's switch the microphone and I'll show you the difference. Okay, so now I have switched to another microphone. This is the Electro Voice RE320 and as you can hear, it sounds totally different to the first microphone that I was speaking through, but I actually like the sound of my voice on both of these microphones. They have that similar kind of sound, which I guess works well for my voice. As I mentioned before, I think Trying a few different mics is always a good idea. See what you like, see what works well with your voice. This is a dynamic microphone, and this is what is known as a condenser microphone. Now, dynamic microphones are much better at eliminating background noise. So if I go back here, you probably can't hear as much of the echo uh, as you could with this one, but ultimately these, you do need to be quite close for them to pick you up and it's um, designed like that specifically. So interestingly, if you go into radio studios all over the UK, they always have condenser microphones. But if you go into radio studios in the US, they normally have either Electro Voice or Shure SM7B mics. Um, we use both. We actually have Shure SM7B mics in our podcasting studio. That is another microphone that sounds really good. I don't have one here right now to show you, but you know, also recommended. Again, about $500 investment, something like that. So uh, quite a, a professional level microphone. But I personally do think condenser mics kind of give you more clarity. They give you more depth than dynamic microphones. That's just my personal opinion. We've had a lot of discussion on this in the past. So 
Tell me in the comments below, what do you think sounds better? Which of these mics do you prefer the sound of? So next up, I'm gonna show you a few industry secrets, really how to enhance your voice even further and get that sort of traditional radio sound that you might have heard before. So stay tuned, we're gonna to cut to audio processing now. Okay, now I want to show you all about audio processing. And this is really the industry secret that most radio stations use to make everything sound sparkly, magical, more in your face, and basically compression is the main part of it. Now I'm not really an audio engineer, so my understanding of this is quite limited, but I do know how to use it, and I do know how you can use it to make your voice sound even more in your face, kind of like louder. Compression is basically pushing more of the audio, more of the dynamic range through the speaker, so it gives the listener the impression that the volume is much louder than it actually is, which is really, really cool. And this has been used for like the last three decades across all different radio stations. Um, still used today, although I think they're not pushing the limits as much as they used to. I think they've sort of toned it down a little bit now because it's not as kind of, it's not necessary because most music is very compressed anyway. But I wanna show you a box of tricks now, which I've been using for the past few years. And I don't tend to use it as much anymore because as I say, I think this sounds good as it just is. Uh, but if you wanna get, take your voice to the next level and you wanna kind of emphasize things even more, I'll show you how to do, do it. Okay, so this is the DBX286S. It's a one unit voice processor. Now, as I mentioned before, I used to use this for, for many years. Uh, probably unplugged it around about a year ago, just because I kind of think it has its pitfalls, it has its ups and downs, but I'm gonna plug it in, I'm gonna run this mic through it so you can see the difference that it makes. So let's just do that now. Okay, welcome back. Now you can hear how my voice sounds when it's rooted through the DBX286X. Now, um, it's completely different. As you can hear, it sounds a lot more in your face, kind of pumped up. It's like my voice has been times by 10. And this is what every single radio station uses to make their DJs sound like really kind of cool and like loud. I've got it kind of quite jazzed up at the moment, so you can kind of tone it down a little bit. It doesn't need to sound this intense, but I kind of wanted to show you the difference between before and after and what a difference adding so much compression can make to the sound of your voice. Now, this has a whole variety of features, including DSO, which is like removing the sissies of sibilis. But, you know, ultimately the, the, the main thing about this is it's got compression, which will just sort of force more of your voice through the speakers and kind of like compress it all into sort of a single band almost. And also high frequency and low frequency enhancers, which basically pushes up the bass and pushes up the highs. If I turn this all down a bit, you can kind of see. Let's have a look. This is kind of like putting everything back to normal a bit. Um, you can see really what the difference is. It's completely different. But if I kind of whack it all back up again, you know, it goes bruh. Um, so, you know, it's completely up to you. And again, and there's plenty of videos out there showing you how to configure this unit. I'm no expert but you can kind of ultimately mess around with the settings until you're happy with it. You can go as kind of high or as sort of intense as you like, but it does make a big difference. That is one of the secrets that a lot of radio stations use to, um, you know, kind of go more in your face, go a bit louder and go kind of more jazzy with the microphones that the presenters are speaking down. The other thing you can do actually is apply processing in post-production as well. So if you've recorded something, for example, and you've got a copy of Audition, you can apply broadcast settings on the multi-track processor. I'll just cut away to show you how to do that, which will give you a similar effect to this unit. Or you could even upload your recording to something like L&R.com, which is kind of like a mastering service. Again, it will give you that kind of compressed, louder sound that you might be looking for. So I really enjoyed making this video for you. That is how you get a radio voice. Remember the tips I told you to begin with, always be yourself. Don't try and pretend to be someone you're not. Get a good microphone. And if you want to, you could also implement some audio processing somewhere along the chain, whether or not it's via a box of tricks like the one I showed you, or even just in your post-production process. If you have any more tips, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And also please remember to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video, if you found it useful. I love making videos like this one for you and it will just encourage me to keep making more and more great content. Hey, wait, before you go anywhere, firstly, I hope you enjoyed that video. I really love making videos like this for you. Please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, I'm making them all the time. Now, if you're interested in starting your own radio station, I'd like to share with you my five-step startup checklist which I've created after working with thousands of radio stations over the past 15 years. Now in this guide, not only do I share with you five steps to starting a radio station with minimal fuss, 
and no technical headaches, but I also want to share with you a lot of the pitfalls that I see people making time and time again. Now, having worked with thousands of radio stations, we see people making the same mistakes. So it's really simple to avoid a lot of these and I outline them in this guide. Whilst you're here, I'd also love to set you up with a one-on-one -on -one discovery call with a member of my team. They'll discuss your idea for a radio station and figure out a plan of action to get you started as quickly as possible. So to get started, just head to jamesm.com slash radio. That's jamesm.com slash radio. I'll put the link down here on the screen and there'll also be a link in the description as well, where you can download my five-step radio startup checklist and also book a one-on-one -on -one discovery call with a member of the team. Thanks very much for watching this video and I look forward to speaking to you soon. All right, take it easy.